Jacob, Gio, good morning. Good to see you guys. Hey, yeah, great to see you. We're excited. Yeah, I've actually, I've done extensive testing uh, with shooting BBs at different velocities. Um, and this far predates me working uh, with Bara. We are working on getting this available in Europe. Uh, so stay tuned on that. This one's got hair all over it. Oh, no. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, you can definitely, you can change the rate of fire by adjusting the gear set, the spring rates. Uh, you can crank up the power somewhat uh, with a stronger spring, uh, maybe an overbore cylinder. So there are definitely things that you can do. What this is going to be is a question and answer session, basically a factory interview, taking the uh, the YouTubers viewer comments that were uh, stacked up below that video. Uh, 500,000 rounds of BBs is $6,250 of CO2. Between the 500 to 600 rounds per minute, but we don't want it to be so fast that, you know, you have a mag dump in two seconds. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Jacob, Gio, good morning. Good to see you guys. Hey, yeah, great to see you. We're excited. Good morning, Steve. What a hey, Gio, We're, uh, what a treat to have you guys on AEAC. Folks, what we're going to do today, if you don't know, Jacob and Gio are the owner and engineer for Barra Air Guns. Two months back in September, I was able to review their brand new Barra 400E, which is the world's first and only fully automatic, all-electronic BB gun. It's basically airsoft tech on steroids, and this thing is a beast. We're talking like 600 rounds per minute rate of fire, 1,000 shots per uh, battery, 50 shots per mag. It's, got, it's loaded with uh, tons of CNC machined aluminum. It's built like a like a battle axe, and it's uh, it's just a total stud. So, for some context on what we're about to do today, you'll first want to watch that full review. I'll link it up in the screen here for you guys. And uh, what this is going to be is a question and answer session, basically a factory interview, taking the uh, the YouTubers viewer comments that were uh, stacked up below that video and asking them to both. Uh, Jacob and Gio, I've got them here. I've got about 25 or so of them, and a lot of them have five or six questions embedded in them. So I anticipate uh, having a, a great hour here. So uh, guys, are you ready? We're, We're ready. ready. Maybe before, uh, really quickly, before uh, we jump into this, a little brief context on the two of you, uh, so that those guys can have some background on who you are, what, what you do, and how you got here. Uh, for the life of me, I can't figure out how People as long, young as you own an air gun company and are an engineer for air guns, how that happens, I'm dying to know. So, um, Jacob, maybe if we could start with you, a little bit of context and background, please. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, basically, on my side, we I started uh, with a team helping suppliers and manufacturers sell products into Walmart, uh, primarily in sporting goods. So, really focused in that category. And uh, about four years ago, uh, we had the opportunity, uh, well, I guess four and a half now, the opportunity to purchase Bear River Outdoors and Black Ops USA, uh, air guns and uh, airsoft. And so we felt really excited about the category and we kind of switched from being just consultants to actually owning a brand. Um, so we made that 
deal happened in 2018, and then uh, we launched Bar in 2019. Uh, Geo, we uh, connected with Geo, and uh, we've been really working on all the things that we've been coming out with this year uh, since about 2019. So it's been a it's been a fun ride, and we're we're excited for everything we have coming in the future. So That's Geo, amazing. why don't Geo, why don't you kind of give them a little history? I know you're. You have quite the legendary background, so. <laughs> so yeah, I've I've been shooting air guns since I was a teenager, and we crossed paths uh, after I had bought a refurbished Sportsman 900 and tore it apart, and saw that there were a couple, you know, simple things that we could do with that gun to make it better. So I contacted them, and I think we met in person for the first time in May of 2019, and we've been working together ever since. So. That's how it all, all got started on my end. Amazing. I got a question. How in the heck, well, for one for each of you, well, maybe for both of you, but Jacob, how in the heck do you, do you get to a place in, in your life where, you know, you're the owner of several air gun manufacturers and successful ones at that? Uh, Especially, well, you look like a pretty young fellow to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely didn't do it alone. Uh, so... Part of a great team. Uh, the founder of our company, he was he was a merchant at Walmart for more than 20 years. He he actually knew Sam Walton, uh, so he's kind of and he he was buying air guns for Walmart for about eight years. So he had a really good foundational knowledge in this category, and and he's the whole reason why we had the opportunity to do this because the owners approached him um, because they knew what he'd been able to do. Um, and my business partner, Josh, we went to college together and, uh, he's, he was the owner's son and he, they've been working really closely and been really successful, uh, in their other consulting business. And, and so we kind of, we built that foundation and, uh, just great people coming together and, and we've been able to execute on ideas. We've made some mistakes along the way for sure, but. Sure. Uh, it's been it's been fun and and we're excited. You know, we feel like there's still a ton of opportunity and ideas uh, out there. So hopefully, hopefully we have some fun stuff coming for you guys to to enjoy. I am definitely excited to see what you guys come up with next. And Geo, dude, how do you become an air gun engineer of all things in life? How does that happen to a man? Well. When you're the kind of person that has to take things apart and you, you always see a better way to do things, um, you know, from the time you're little to, you know, it just never dies, um, you know, and I just happen to be at the right place in the right time uh, in meeting um, Jake and the team. So, yeah, just just kind of fell into place. I'd been, you know, put my life on that trajectory and when the time was right, it, it hit. So, Gio, how cool. many, how many, uh, BBs and pellets do you think you've shot in your lifetime? Why don't you uh, give the people what they want? Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, for BBs this year alone, uh, we're looking at well over half a million uh, just this year. Uh, as far as pellets, I mean, I joke all the time, you know, if aliens ever visit this planet <laughs> in the long distant future, they're going to mine lead and steel. <laughs> they're going to wonder what property. this giant deposit of steel and lead is in your backyard. <laughs> exactly. It'd be very Which concentrated in and certain. <laughs> What's that? Was, did I have that right? You're from Arkansas, Geo, and Jacob, you're uh, out no, of No, actually, I'm in Missouri, so. You're in Missouri. Not far from Arkansas. Okay. And Jacob, you're Oklahoma. I'm I'm in Arkansas. I'm Arkansas. like right on. Wow, the I really had that butchered. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all right next to each other, so I can be in Missouri in 30 minutes and Oklahoma in 40. So same chunk of dirt. Thank you guys for your yeah. grace. <laughs> well, you ready to get into some questions for these guys? Yeah, sure let's am. dive in. All right, let's do it. First question is uh, from Joseph Saucedo. Um, and there's kind of a lot of questions in this paragraph, so maybe we'll go through them. Maybe I'll read the whole thing, and then we'll kind of break it down and go through them one at a time. So uh, Joseph writes, is there going to be parts to upgrade the power of the gun and the barrel lengths for more accuracy? Uh, is it smoothbore? I answered that in the video. It is smoothbore. Um, I'm almost positive it was a big part of why uh, the group were so bad at 20 yards. Is there any possibility to get a higher capacity magazine 200 round. Is it possible to use airsoft parts in it for upgrades? Great question. 
750 to 800 feet per second and a thousand rounds a minute would definitely be a big boy BB gun like my uh, Drods Blackbird, the HPA, um, all the questions I can think of out loud. So uh, maybe let's break that down. So uh, <laughs> are there going to be parts to upgrade the power of the gun and the barrel lengths for more accuracy? Yeah, Gio, so, do you want to hit that one? Yeah, certainly. Um, as far as parts, you already kind of touched on it in your question. You mentioned, you know, the possibility of using uh, airsoft parts. There are a number of airsoft parts already on the market that are going to be a direct drop in fit uh, in our gearbox. Um, so, yeah, there, there already are parts, springs, cylinders, pistons, gear sets, uh, upgraded motors. Uh, trigger groups, all those sorts of things. If you can do it in airsoft, most likely you're going to be able to drop that right into our gearbox. So yeah, you can definitely, you can change the rate of fire by adjusting the gear set, the spring rates. Uh, you can crank up the power somewhat uh, with a stronger spring, uh, maybe an overbore cylinder. So there are definitely things that you can do. If you're already familiar with like airsoft tech type work, uh, you'll be pretty happy with this uh, platform. So good deal. And uh, the barrel, I mean, I had mentioned this in the full review. It is smooth board. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, certainly. So since we're shooting uh, steel ammunition, um, you know, you have the issue of if you try to rifle the barrel, you're not going to get real good engraving on the projectile. Um, so typically with BBs to get the best accuracy, you want to have what's called a tight bore. Uh, barrel and so that's what we've done with this we've made it more or less in the airsoft world what would be called a tight bore barrel and so it's a very close fit to get the most accuracy possible you want to make sure that you keep that barrel as clean and as dry as possible keep it as oil free as possible and that will give you the best accuracy uh, and with and, BBs. Oh, sorry go ahead Gio. so yeah that'll give you the best accuracy uh with bbs so and if you guys are, if you are happening to watch these videos in reverse, this gun is very accurate. I was doing 50 round magazine dumps over three different types of ammunition and at 30 feet getting one inch groups and at 45 feet getting two inch groups. I mean, it was, it was impressive. And that's at like a 600 round per minute rate of fire. And this thing's just a total rock star. So. Uh, I found the smoothbore great. It did. The accuracy did go away once I got out to 50 and 60 feet. And by go away, I mean like, you know, you can definitely hit a steel silhouette, uh, even a small eight inch steel silhouette. But so you can have fun in that way. But if you want like, you know, heart of the Coke can accuracy, 30 to 45 feet was was kind of where I was at on it. Sound yeah. about right? Yeah. And one thing I know uh, Joseph had the question about the rate of fire. Mm. So kind of. We we toured around with this when we were in development with this item, and we we really settled on something that we felt was uh, was quick, you know, between the 500 to 600 rounds per minute. But we don't want it to be so fast that you know you have a mag dump in two seconds. So that was kind Very of valid. why we settled on you know a lower rate of fire in some people's mind. So, hey, you're actually having an extended length that you can fire in full auto. So that's kind of what we decided was a sweet spot. You know, obviously that's an opinion, but uh, we tried to do sure. the best we could. So we've all yeah. got them. So it's all good. That rate of fire also, it kind of balances out, you know, the longevity of the gearbox. Um, sure. You know, and as Jake said, you know, being able to engage your targets, feel like you're getting, you know, more time on the trigger. Uh, I know with like CO2 guns, you pull the trigger and it's done. Um, sometimes being first is not always, uh, you know, the best thing in the world. So, yeah, you know, for what it's worth being the review guy, I found the rate of fire to be dead on. I mean, I, the, the, the mag dumps for me were fast and the rate of fire felt very fast. And so um, I wouldn't want any more or less on either on either end of that compressing my fun time so I, i'm with you on that but i respect that joseph wants more all good so the uh, rest of his question i'm almost positive that was a big part of the group being uh so bad at 20 yards is there any possibility to get a higher capacity so 
maybe let's break that down. So is there a way to get more accuracy past 45 feet? Or is that the limitation of the smooth bore barrel you spoke of? Some of the limitation is not even necessarily the barrel. Uh, you also have to consider that, you know, a, a steel BB weighs, you know, 5.1 grains. It's got a ballistic coefficient of, you know, 0 0.01 maybe. Yeah. So, it's going to blow around like a dandelion seed. Yeah, it's, it's all kind of relative. And I know a lot of viewers here are probably used to, you know, shooting longer range pellets and hopefully slugs, you know, getting into more modern times. Mm -hmm. And so you have to realize that while this gun might be more accurate than grandpa's BB gun was, um, you know, it, there is going to be some relative nature to the term accuracy here. Um, so what, you know, would be a terrible group for your, your slug shooter um, at 50 yards might be a pretty good group for a BB gun at 20 yards. So. Yeah, for sure. I found I was at 25 yards. I was able to ring, a, you know, a standard steel silhouette. No problem. You know, to the point where I could have fun with it and kind of practice. Right. And so that exceeded my expectations for my experience with, you know, the Crossman BB guns growing up. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It was way more accurate. And especially in that fully automatic mode, how you pulled that off. I don't know. He asks about, um, increasing the, uh, capacity of the magazine. That is something that we have been, uh, considering and working on. One of the things I wanted to do, of course, was to test, you know, how does the motor hold up to a sustained rate of fire? Um, mm, you know, sure. how does the gearbox do? Because you know, if we have a 200 round magazine, uh, I know I'm going to put that thing on full auto, and I'm going to dump that magazine in one trigger pull. So you <laughs> want to make sure something's going to get melted either the barrel, right. You want to make the, sure the motor, the gearbox, can... something's going down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I have been testing that. Uh, I actually have just a lower that anytime I'm frustrated working in the shop and I need to blow off some steam, yeah. <laughs> uh, I dry fire that thing for a minute at a time and I've not managed to destroy that gearbox yet. So I'm feeling pretty confident at this point that a higher capacity magazine uh, would allow you to still enjoy a long life out of your gun. So that's great news. I'll, I'll, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jim. It's definitely something on the table, adding a, a higher capacity magazine. I'm glad to hear that because I'll back Geo on that. Uh, it was the gun performs so well and it's so fun that 50 round magazine dump goes by so quickly, which is good for practicing changing mags. But I, but a couple of times I was like, holy shit, party is over already. That happened really <laughs> quick. So, but you know, so if you can figure out how to do it and not melt or weld that BB to the inside of that barrel in the process, I think that would be really cool. For sure. Um, he's talking about velocity. Uh, is it possible to use airsoft parts? You guys hit that 750, 800 feet per second, thousand rounds a minute would be blah, blah, blah. Um, do you want to speak to velocity? I mean, I was getting, if I remember 485, 495, kind of weather dependent and ammo dependent. Why should, it should be about a hundred <laughs> feet per second lower than that. Um, excuse me, 395. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds just sub, that sub sounds 400. More, my bad. Right. It should be right around that 400 mark. So this is a this was with a 5.23 grain Crossman Black Widow. It's 85 shots. I had a high of 392, a low of 379, an average of 386. This is the mind-blowing part, okay, guys? An extreme spread of 13 and a standard deviation of 2.3. Yep. Um, yeah, I've actually, I've done extensive testing uh, with shooting BBs at different velocities. Um, and this far predates me working uh, with Barra. And I found that out of a smoothbore barrel with no hop up or any type of mechanism to try to introduce spin on a uh, steel BB, mm -hmm. I found that, you know, between 200 to 400 feet per second, um, the BBs are actually reasonably accurate out of a tight bore barrel. Once you start increasing the speed, you really do need to apply some sort of spin. Um, mm -hmm. I found backspin does indeed work. 
uh, but it does add a great deal of complexity uh, to the system. So it can be done. Um, will we do it? it? It remains to be seen. So does that slow like the dwell time of the BB and the barrel once you get the rifling in there and then that kind of cascading effect through the reciprocating piston and gearbox and motor is that kind so of if, if i was going to go down that road i would honestly probably uh get rid of the steel bbs and at that point i would be looking at rifling and using um maybe lead round balls yeah i was uh, h&n sport makes what looks like a lead bb i know you can buy them you used to be able to buy them at pyramid air Exactly. I've got some in here. I thought about putting them through the gun, but I was like, nah, if I break it, I won't be able to finish reviewing it. Right. And, and <laughs> the other thing you got to realize, too, is steel BBs are actually uh, sized smaller compared to like the pellets that we're used to shooting. Mm. Once you get into the lead round balls, they're sized as the pellets are. And mm. so if you try to use the lead round balls, they'll actually be oversized for the barrel. Uh -huh. So they, uh, they would get stuck in there. Right. They a would smeary get mess stuck. or something. Exactly. Yeah, there's going to be lead shavings everywhere. So you guys are going to be getting guns back to borrow for warranty work with like lead BBs just like <laughs> stacked up in the barrel where right. it shot itself full of them. That happens, by the way. I talk to air gun manufacturers who do get guns back where they're like, I don't know what the deal with this thing is. It won't fire. And they've double fed and they got a whole barrel full of pellets. Got a whole magazine of pellets stuck in the Yeah, barrel. exactly. Exactly. All right, you guys ready? Ready. Ready for another one? Yeah. All right, so this is Kieho Woof. Mal Maltenen. Uh, <laughs> two questions. Um, can you use plastic BBs in it? And is the bar four hundred available in Europe? Yeah. Uh, so I'll gee, I'll take the second one. Uh, we are working on getting this available in Europe. Uh, so stay tuned on that. Uh, we we know we have a lot of european customers people that are interested so yeah we are working on that uh so stay tuned good deal geo plastic so on the plastic bbs it's important that you pay attention to the size there are a couple suppliers that do offer a 4.5 millimeter plastic uh, bb and that will indeed work um but keep in mind most of the plastic ammunition out there when you type in plastic bbs most of what you're going to get coming up in search results is actually airsoft ammo mm -hmm. which is sized at six millimeters so you definitely don't want to try stuffing that into your magazine and then <laughs> okay that. to be clear <laughs> no airsoft right in your bara make sure it's four and a half millimeter do keep in mind i mean obviously it's going to be a lot lighter than uh, steel bbs in theory it's harder on the gearbox in my practice of trying to destroy a gearbox i've not managed to do so so but in theory you are going to put greater stress on the components of the gun shooting lighter ammunition so okay makes sense good deal uh is that all you guys want to say on that one yeah i think, I think so. so awesome okay so this guy's name is honestly for real he says um so is it safe to assume the accuracy falls apart beyond 30 feet yeah, the further out you go and the more breeze that's out there for sure. That said, I mean, I'll admit my guilty pleasure is actually taking the 400E out on my back deck and I've got about 60 yards of good clear shooting. And I do like lobbing it out. I've got a frying pan set out at uh, six, right at 60 yards that I like to use as a gong for my PCPs. And I love, arcing that BB out to there and, and hearing that ting, ding, you know, ding, as the ding, BB ding. hits the pan, mm -hmm. it can be done. Um, and I'll tell you what, that will challenge your skill, your long range shooting skills. Oh, Cause of doping for wind on that. Yeah. You're going to have to use the force to hit the gong. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> um, and that's where the full auto does come in handy. You know, you kind of get a stream out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like playing with a garden hose. You start high and work your way down or you can start it low is. and work your way up. And it's crazy how fun that is. And I mean, I love my precision shooting as much as the next guy, but this brings out the kid in me. Um, and honestly, sometimes 
this kind of shooting is just it's relaxing it's it's a change from the norm and yet there's still a a ridiculous amount of skill that sometimes luck that goes into hitting a target out at that distance what's interesting to me about honestly for real's question is he asks you know is it safe to assume the accuracy falls apart past 30 feet i thought the accuracy was fantastic at 45 feet and I was able to demonstrate that over three brands of BBs in full automatic mode, like a two inch group with maybe like one or maybe two swingers in a 50 round magazine dump, all printing inside of two inches at 45 feet. I was frankly shocked at that. Uh, to me, I would categorize that as very accurate for a, you know, a BB and a smooth bore. But to your guys' point where I did see it get you know, where it would come out to like six or eight inches. Once you got to that like 20 yard mark, um, that's when things would open up to, you know, that pie plate range kind of. It was really interesting. You know, it's like, it's like at 45 feet, it's like super compressed. And then at 60 feet, it just goes from like this to this. It's like, there's some physics in there. Like you had mentioned with the the light, you know, maybe the weight or the, the round ball, or we are dealing with a BB here. This isn't, you know, this isn't right. made by Hornady. Well, one of them claims to be, but I, my guess is Daisy <laughs> makes all of these. I don't know. Maybe you guys can t- speak to that. But um, good, good on that one. I think so. Yeah. All right. Um, Awaken the sheep says, does this gun shoot the plastic airsoft BBs? We touched on that. Not a great idea. If you do want to experiment, be very mindful of the millimeter, 4.5, as I think what you said. Yeah, in theory, yeah. if if you're willing to do a little bit of work and, and fitting, you could put a, you know, an airsoft nozzle on this gearbox. That would be the first thing that would have to be done. Um, and then you could put in a six millimeter barrel and hop up unit. Uh, there's a good chance that you could get all that to work. You might have to do a little 3D printing to get everything to fit right. Um, but yeah, it, it would be absolute killer uh with six millimeter airsoft one thing (laughs) that you'll find with getting power is we're fighting um a smaller diameter and so you know from shooting pcps generally you know 177 we think of it as being choked down Um, Mm -hmm. it's harder to get massive power because you're trying to force that air through smaller passages Mm -hmm. you have less surface area force is equal to pressure times area there's just simply less area behind the pellet for the air pressure to work on Um, so it's definitely easier to make power in six millimeter than it is in four and a half millimeter i would expect you to have an absolute monster um with the six millimeter conversion (laughs) well now this is all very encouraging and exciting but at the same time i think it's probably important and i'm assuming i shouldn't assume but if i'm a manufacturer that's exceeding the the design limitations or expectations is a better word that's exceeding the design expectations of the intended you know of the intended rifle so um that's going to be non-warranty stuff if they grenade their gearbox or gun doing that, right? Yeah, that's correct. I would only suggest, you know, people like myself who laugh at the idea of a warranty. Um, <laughs> you know, if you're one of those guys, I mean, have at it. You know, if you've ever hopped up, you know, and souped up an airsoft gun and you're not concerned about, you know, how valid your warranty is, um, then, I mean, you're going to have a lot of fun modding it. And, of course, at your own risk, but... Sure. Which it's a playground. Me, oh, without a doubt. I mean, uh, these airsoft guys, as you know, are like hardcore into this. So let's say I, I am an airsoft guy and, and, I, and I can take my gun apart. I know it backwards and forwards. I swap all the parts out all the time. I've got a bar 400E. I, wanted to, I want to start living dangerously with it. And I grenade a gearbox or I grenade a motor or smoke a barrel. Are, are, these, are these parts available to purchase for them? where they can rebuild their gun and get it back to OEM? We are working on that. Jake could probably speak (laughs) better than me on on where that's at. Um, Because you know they're going to do it. That's kind of a setback. (laughs) Yeah, so we we just got, we got some parts in. We actually, this is the first time this has happened. Uh, Someone cracked open, broke the seal on our container and stole uh, a lot of the parts and, and some guns. 
so anyway, we're in a claim process right now uh, with the ocean line, ocean oh, wow. liner. Um, but yeah, we did get some parts in. We do have, and they will be up. We kind of had to quarantine them, you know, for this claims deal to, to sort itself out. But yeah, we sure. will have parts available within the next 30 days, like gearboxes, motors, uh, stocks, things like that. So we will, some of the parts were gone, or like comp they stole all of them. So I'm really sorry. Uh, That's a real, real shame that that happened to you guys. Yeah, I, I was surprised. Uh, I mean, we've imported a lot of containers and this is the first time it's ever happened. So uh, hopefully it doesn't happen again. <laughs> but, yeah, hey, jokes on, jokes on them. Can you imagine their disappointment when they went through all that risk and went, oh, shit, this is for BB guns? <laughs> <are> just parts. <laughs> uh, Damn. Didn't, didn't read the manifest closely enough, I guess. Yeah, no, but. apparently not. So do, do the... Is your website the source for the parts, or is this Pyramid AOA, UA? Like, what is this? Yeah, it'll be on our website. Um, I'm not sure. We actually haven't worked out if we're going to have, like, third third parties selling the parts. But, yeah, they will be on the site Which is uh, very soon. Barairguns.com. Awesome. Great. All right, moving on. You guys ready? Ready. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll give you each $100. If you know how to pronounce this, this is his name. D R D J R I S K Y K U T. <laughs> Don't think uh, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, that's hard I didn't see him writing it down. I think you both guys both went F it right out of the gate on that one. Me too. So he writes, or she, I don't know. Um, not even allowed the full auto version in the UK. How ridiculous. What do you know about that? Yeah, so UK, uh, yeah, they're not allowed full auto BB guns or pellet guns. So, We are working on having uh, an option available for those in the UK. Uh, so, yeah, that's another one to stay tuned for uh, next year. Good deal. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see. BFS Profit says, oh, great question. Is the motor brushless? I was wondering that. No, it, it is a brushed motor. Um, there are brushless airsoft motors on the market. Uh, so, you know, somebody did want to put a brushless motor in there, in theory, it can be done. Um, but for now we're just offering it with the, uh, brushed motor, okay. old, uh, reliable tech is kind of the way we went. So. Yeah. I don't know if I'd talk it down. I got a lot of fast electric boats in here. That's one of my hobbies and we run both and the other ones are fast as hell, but, uh, you know, some of them are drawn like 15, 20 amps, believe it or not. Like your like your Hoover vacuum. Cleaner. Right. Just make a br just a brush mess inside the boat. Exactly. They just disintegrate like paper mache. But I, I imagine that's it's not an issue you have with. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the even thing turning thirty thousand like RPM. Right, and if if you look at like the the torque curves of brushed versus brushless motors, I mean, yeah, brushless is new, and there are certainly positives to it. Uh, but there are also drawbacks, and a lot of times we get blinded by all the pluses and we don't consider uh, the minuses. Uh, so for the stop and go that, um, you know, a strong airsoft style gearbox demands on a motor, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to beat just the old school reliability. Uh, it can be done. It is being done in airsoft, but um, in the interest of simplicity and re reliability, we went with... Um, old school trusted tech so <laughs> all right steve f says um do you have photos of the gearbox internals i want to upgrade the power and rof if they're airsoft compatible i've built several aegs that put out 700 feet per second 
at 25 to 30 RPS, approximately five joules, whereas the stock bar is two joules. Thanks. All right, yeah. Gio. So, you know, as we've alluded to before, there are a lot of airsoft parts that, you know, are going to directly drop. Uh, I've put other gear sets in mine um, and, of course, cylinders, cylinder heads, all those sorts of things uh, can definitely be done. And also, as I mentioned before, you kind of have physics working against you, um, you know, whenever you're running a four and a half millimeter barrel versus a six millimeter barrel. Um, I will say this though, a longer barrel, uh, I do believe there's still steam behind that BB. A longer barrel is definitely going to get you closer to, you know, your higher speed, higher power goals. Uh, that is probably the single uh, greatest thing that you could do um, in order to get massive power out of it. Okay. Now, whether or not you actually, in, in theory, you, you know, you'd like the idea of power. Uh, we all do. Um, in practice, you got to be careful what you ask for. I don't know if you've ever been hit with a ricochet. I had when I filmed. I, I got nailed right in the abdomen a couple times. <laughs> One got me at least. <laughs> So imagine and I was shooting that, at something like 30 feet away. Right. So imagine if, you know, the, the velocity was, you know, 700, 800, 1,000 feet per second. I mean, it's going to leave a mark. Bad. Yeah, it, it might leave a BB in your skin. So, you know, think about, you know, the consequences of the higher power. Um, even though, Super you know, bad. 400 feet per second is nothing necessarily to sneeze at. Um, you know, anybody that's tried to build a backstop um, that's not like steel based mm -hmm. or was mild steel based um, in the case of an experiment I had done, these things are abrasive at, you know, 550 to 600 rounds per minute. Mm -hmm. They chew through wood. They chew through everything. Yes, they do. Um, so, you know, probably the best way to stop them is, you know, kind of the principle of a catcher's mitt where you have something that's flexible, it's got give and can kind of just gently cushion and let it drop as opposed to actually trying to stop it. Not a steel silhouette. Steel is right. bad for stopping. If you do steel angle pieces. it downward into like some sand or something um, and that can minimize the the steel com BBs coming back at you. But Super be valid, what you wish Gio. for. That, that, that higher power can bite you in, in the abdomen, I guess. It's not going to bite you in the rear unless you're shooting backwards <laughs> over your shoulder. But <laughs> Yeah, I mean, now that I think about it and I, and I remember the pain of those abdomen hits, to capture yeah. that in a soft spot, like maybe in the teeth or in right. the lips. You know, I had the safety exactly. goggles on or whatever, but um, I don't think I'd want it coming back any harder than that. So, I, so yeah. now I'm thinking I don't want more than 400, but... <laughs> Another topic for another day. Uh, okay, uh, Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy writes, um, you had me hooked right up till the battery. Aren't there any companies that make a PCP BB gun? <clears throat> Excuse me. I have several PCP air rifles and, and would be easier to use air rather than batteries or CO2. They made those BB guns for country fairs and such hooked up to an air compressor or bottled gas. Guys? All right, Gio. I think, uh, yeah, this is one you've been looking for, so. <laughs> <laughs> this one's got hair all over it. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> You know, I guess, you know, if, if you already have everything needed uh, to keep PCPs filled, I can definitely see where you're coming from. You know, you've made a good investment in, you know, tanks, compressors, hand pumps, um, you know, and I would understand for somebody in that situation, a PCP BB gun just makes sense. Um, if you're not already set up for uh, PCP shooting, I don't think it gets any easier than recharging a battery. Um, you know, with these modern balanced chargers, they do the work for you. You just plug in the balance lead, um, you know, and it does the magic of balancing the cells. 
Um, and when the light's off, it's charged and ready to rock and roll. And so for a lot of people that and are just cheap. getting a lot of people that are just getting into the sport, I don't think there's any easier way to feed a gun than with battery. Um, it's just we're all used to charging our cell phones um, and other electronic devices. And so I feel like using battery power really removes a barrier, um, you know, for a lot of people. It's amazing how many people in this day and age, even with $50 hand pumps and, you know, $350 compressors, a lot of people still don't want to make that plunge um, and get into PCP shooting. It's amazing how many people are still shooting break barrels, multi pumps. Um, and I'm not going to lie, say I, I love my multi pumps. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it just really comes down to, to where you're at in, in the space. What about the physics of it? Like with the rapid fire, even just like with CO2, I'm imagining um, with a precharged pneumatic, there being pressure drop. Pressure yeah, dropping. Yeah, it, is it the does case. actually cool. Um, it's not as dramatic with compressed air as it is with CO2, but with rapid pressure drop, you do lose temperature. It's just like if you fill your PCP tank too fast, you'll feel that tank heat. Right. Well, when you do the opposite, that heat gets pulled out. And so that does have a cooling effect. You do lose pressure. Um, but, you know, it's not as dramatic in PCP as it is in CO2. Okay. Uh, the other right. thing, though, is, you know, air is cheap until you start compressing it. Um, so, you know, and air compressing is not a, a particularly efficient endeavor. Um, it's one of the biggest expenditures uh, in terms of like manufacturing. Uh, if you use uh, any equipment that's powered by compressed air, that's going to represent a huge part of your bill. Uh, yeah. So with with the current 400E technology, it's actually more similar to a brake barrel. Uh, you're not actually what the battery is doing is compressing the spring and then the spring pressure is released and that compresses the air ahead of the piston. That process does heat the air, but then that energy is directly transferred to the ammunition. And that's a much more efficient process than the other. So mm -hmm. it does have definitely have an efficiency advantage of, you know, compressing the air on the fly and directly powering the ammunition with it as opposed to separating those two processes like a PCP would do. I get um I get what um I get your side of it that the bulk of your customers <clears throat> um you know don't have the, the expensive PCP gear already. Now I get Greg's side of it where he's like, "Oh, I will already have the gear. You know, I don't want to have to buy a battery and a charger." But the only thing I would say to you Greg is a battery is how much, guys? I get like 30 two bucks. batteries for 30 something dollars. All right. And the chargers, how much? Yeah. 10, 12, 10 and, bucks. And I mean, bucks. you can spend 50 and get a much nicer, you know, faster charger. So, so for, for practical purposes, I can get a battery and a charger for less than $25. And that battery does indeed provide a th over a thousand shots at a consistent velocity before you need to recharge, which in my experience, is days and when i was on the gun filming i was on the gun filming and i couldn't run a battery down to save my life even over days so right. i get both sides of it and i just i thought it'd be healthy to talk about both sides of it oh so for sure that's and my, I, yeah. I definitely get the pcp side of things i i did build a um 0.375 steel ball shooter that was full auto about 10 years ago and boy, it's hungry for air. And I mean, back then I was hand pumping it and stuff. Um, that that was a drag. But 0.375 round steel balls, full auto is it, it made it worth it. I I could definitely see the PCP <laughs> yeah, side. Gio, I bet you too. make a mean potato launcher, man. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a guilty guilty laugh to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready to move on? Ready. Yeah.
All right, this is uh, Mara, um, Mamuro Chiba. Seven questions in his question, and they're numbered, so stand by. Brace yourselves, guys. Number one, what is the future of the Bar 400E? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we've kind of been talking about that the last however many minutes. So we are, we're kind of exploring really the, the whole idea of the 400. And I think some of these questions have alluded to this. We wanted to make the ultimate plinking full auto BB gun. Okay. So that was really the focus. Like <clears throat> I know the CO2 guns have been really popular the last few years. They're expensive. So like, Look, I think we did the math on this. I think uh, what a ten thousand shots in a CO two BB gun is about mm -hmm. one hundred and twenty five bucks of CO two. So uh, okay, so if I'm shooting the gun, I'm going to spend a ton of money on CO two. Now, if I do twenty thousand shots, we're at two hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, and so at that point, like that's for us hey our guns more expensive uh initially but then if you're actually going to be shooting the gun you're going to make up your money really fast yeah, so like I in actually, the first year of ownership almost or second year of ownership yeah so i mean depending how much you shoot like geo he's shot over five hundred thousand rounds he doesn't count though we can't use those <laughs> as an exact. he's yeah, a freak I'm, of nature when it comes to bb's <laughs> right so i did the math on this just for fun so uh, 500,000 rounds of BBs is $6,250 of CO2. And, uh, Buy a motorcycle for that. Use a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, and then to charge that battery, Geo spent maybe a dollar of energy. A dollar to charge his $15 battery. To, to charge that battery. With his $5 dollar charger. Sense. So exactly. it's like the whole future and premise of this gun was yeah. we're going to make the ultimate plinker you're going to buy this thing, it's full metal, and then you're going to shoot this thing basically forever. Yeah, um, point, point well taken. So that's kind of the future of the gun. We all, we are working on, you know, some of these things like the improved improved speed loader. We'll, we'll see what we can do with the magazines if we have different variations of that. But really the core of this gun is the same. It's the ultimate plinking gun. It's a great training tool. Uh, for practicing basic shooting skills and mm -hmm. uh, and you know drills, so I'm not even we don't even need to entertain how much 500,000 rounds of 556 five, ammunition is going to cost you. So um, you know that's that's why we created this gun. And if you like shooting, we think you're going to like it for those reasons. On that topic, Jacob, in the world of um, ARs, AKs, and and um, sidearms flat dark earth has become super fashionable um so in reference to the future of the bara any plans for like an fde or an olive green or anything crazy and cool like that yeah we actually just uh released a new color uh a week ago cool i think so i can show that uh to you it's on bar ergens FDE? yeah woo, so woo. it's on bar ergens right now uh i'll try and keep this in front of my face so you can see it yeah, pull uh, the gun right up to your face and it'll it'll focus it. There you go. So yeah, nice. here's the, the new color. It's out now. Um, oh, it looks so good. So if there's anything you guys want to see uh, with the gun, let us know. I know a few of you have been talking about the rate of fire, the speed. Uh, we think we have some other things in development that we think are going to scratch that itch for you. Uh, but really, the purpose of this gun is, as I just described it, um so uh but yeah we're always working on new stuff so uh, awesome. if you have anything you want to see let us know and i can't make any promises but uh we'll see what we can do everyone seems to be, all be about the pain of that ricochet give me more <laughs> <laughs> uh great question will there be a short barrel version of this rifle that's a cool question that's actually something i've done um with my personal gun um i actually did take another barrel and shorten it down to be about even with the suppressor thread block um you know you do lose a good deal of velocity and the velocity loss was enough that i decided i would put a non-linear lighter spring in there 
and it turned the gun into a completely different beast um it was a lot quieter a lot slower but smooth as can be if any of you have taken like a a high power brake barrel and maybe detuned it uh, to some degree maybe put in a short stroke kit or something like that you kind of get that same effect um just where the character of the gun just dramatically changes um and so if you're wanting to do the short barrel you got to understand it is going to come at a cost of velocity as it does with you know in the firearm world the sbr is going to shoot slower you know than a full length rifle barrel it's just you know the nature of physics so <clears throat> there's another way to fix this I'm, my, my <laughs> wheels are turning <laughs> uh, bump up <laughs> <laughs> a bullpup. Yes, I agree. Yeah, definitely. A, a bullpup that would be style amazing. replica. You would get the long barrel without having an excessively long package. So you guys sir, have that it, license with um with um um M lock. You could get a, a license with a license going with the Israeli arms or something. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Get that bullpup going, baby. For sure. Great. All right, ready for the next one ready yeah we're still on um we're still on Mamaro. this is his number three can the inner barrel be replaced with a short barrel one and without and without the wanna wannabe moderator i think you spoke to that unless you want to add something yeah and another thing to keep in mind is you know this does have a lot of airsoft heritage and so it is possible that you would be able to find um you know longer outer barrels uh, so if you didn't necessarily care for, you know, the current design, you can probably dress these up. Uh, I don't have any specific examples of what you could put in, um, but if you already have some airsoft parts laying around, uh, definitely give them a shot and see. Uh, they may work with minor fitting, maybe even no fitting. So okay, you can definitely change and customize things. All right. So the moderator is kind of part of the heritage. Is yeah, it applying? is. It actually does have the M14 uh, counterclockwise threads. So okay. for those of you that want to take that off, make sure you remember the threads are opposite of what we're used to. The other thing to keep in mind <laughs> is that in the 400E, the moderator actually protects the barrel. Um, it goes, the barrel goes right to the end. It doesn't function as a moderator. It, it's actually, its functional purpose is to protect the uh, the barrel inside. So. Okay, so it's not technically wannabe. It just has it has other roles assigned to it. Exactly. Now, if you do shorten Important the barrel, <laughs> if you do shorten the barrel, uh, it's going to take some of that pop out of the shot. I'm going to just boop Sorry. that part out or cut it out altogether, so we don't get ourselves <laughs> in trouble with YouTube. Geo. <laughs> uh, uh, number four. Since the company has an airsoft side, will they incorporate MOSFET? into the future of the MOSFET, am I saying that right? Into the future of the Barra 400E versions. So <clears throat> it is definitely something that that we could do. Uh, if we see enough you know, customer demand, we may look at that um, as being maybe an aftermarket upgrade. Um, obviously, if the demand's strong enough, that could become a part of the base gun itself. Uh, but again, I know I'm beating a dead horse saying this, but anything you can do in Airsoft uh, as long as you are kind of, you know, pushing toward the higher, the heavier end of things on airsoft, make sure that, you know, whatever components you're using can really handle some current. Uh, you can definitely put in MOSFETs. Uh, you can get, you know, custom trigger um, type upgrades and stuff. So that's definitely something you can do with your gun. I don't think you're beating a dead horse, uh, Geo. Th that question of airsoft compatibility is a theme that's throughout these 25 right. uh, comments and um and, and that's his next one you know internal wise will there be mods available for the gun so the answer is look to the airsoft uh, industry a lot of that stuff will just switch right over um right you, you know you're playing with your warranty at that point if you grenade it but uh, you know maybe maybe it'll work out in your favor geo seems to think that it might Pretty damn impressive. Uh, can the rate of fire be changed by using a higher amp battery? That's an interesting question. It does make a, a 
small difference. If you go with the battery uh, size that we recommend, uh, the C rating, the voltage, the milliamp hours, um, you know, you're going to get excellent uh, performance. In increasing the C rating is not necessarily at, at that point, you're, you're going to have a hard time stuffing that battery into the stock. Um, so yeah, there's, there's not a lot of gains to be had there. Um, yeah, that's, that's the same battery I've got. I love this battery. I this love time. those batteries. Yeah. You, you yeah. guys sent me like three or four to play with. I think I like this one best. Yep. And it's cheap. That's the one I personally use. You can get two of those on Amazon. The price has gone up a little bit. I'm, I'm wanting to say it's between 33 and $37 for two, but it's, it's money well spent. I think yeah. it was 28 when I got mine. And this thing will last you, I mean, I think the average person, it'll last them weeks. Yeah. Weeks. And I've I've shot this gun ridiculously, you know, this year, as well as pre-production samples using those batteries. And I'm not hurting for capacity yet, so. <laughs> so he mentioned the amp, upping the amps, but I don't think you can up amps, but you can up the voltage by going from the three cells to a four cell, but will a four cell even fit in that to your point earlier? You so you not? can, you can get a four cell battery. Certainly that will fit. And I believe, uh, I remember seeing in the comment section of a video uh, where somebody was asking about uh, higher voltage and, you know, you can overvolt motors. I, I don't know if you guys have seen uh, people do that with like the Power Wheels kids cars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's videos of people put 24 volt. They, they run on six volt batteries, and I've seen people put 24 volt, you know, batteries in there and give uh, Junior the keys. And I mean, they are tearing up the yard, being <laughs> absolute menace. But as for the timing of the bar, will it even work? Oh, that that's all mechanical timing. Um, so it that will increase the rate of fire. Uh, as far as but increasing. Will it melt it? Yeah, you're going to accelerate the wear and tear on your gun. So again, you're playing okay. with the warranty. Um, you're obviously what warranty? At that point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What warranty? <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, motors are cheap. Um, you know, so if you don't mind burning up brushes a little faster. Now, I will say this: if you have a jam. Uh, you're definitely looking at grenading your gearbox. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you might want to have some extra gear sets laying around. <laughs> Good to know. So experiment at your own risk. It, it, I'll tell you this. It's fun. I've not overvolted the 400E, but I have overvolted our airsoft guns. And it takes kind of, you know, that I'm just getting into airsoft type of gun to you know i've got an absolute screamer on my hands <laughs> hey i don't so, want to we'll, jump we'll down put a that smile on your face and... until it no longer works <laughs> you hit it geo you guys also make airsoft guns what's the brand in case they want to jump online and look at it yeah that'll be uh black ops airsoft awesome uh, hey, uh uh mamuro's last question can the feet per second be changed so velocity is what he's asking and that and if i'm guessing that has to do the only way you can do that is with barrel length the and barrel length is going to give you the best bang for your buck. Unfortunately, we don't have any longer barrels. And of course, you know, if you put a longer barrel in, it's now going to extend past the suppressor. So visually, you'll probably want to do some some work there. Maybe, you know, look for a longer barrel in the airsoft world. You can, um, you know, put in a stronger spring. The 400E mm -hmm. does have a quick uh, change spring. Uh, in it, you don't have to disassemble the entire gun to change the spring, which is a very nice feature. Um, but again, you're driving the gun a lot harder than it was originally intended. So, sure, uh, look, I can look, definitely look, tell look you for smoke, <laughs> right? And and don't be afraid to play around with some lighter springs, maybe some you know nonlinear springs. Uh, you may actually find that you like the smoother characteristics, especially if you're trying to you know squeeze out more accuracy. Is very much like tuning a brake barrel. Uh, and so, you know, playing around with spring rates, sometimes, yeah, you might sacrifice a few feet per second, but then you've, you know, reduced your group size in half, and that might be, you know, a worthwhile trade-off. Yeah, the and devil's so, advocate to that is true, too, where you go up in power just a little bit, and all of a sudden you're shotgun city. So right. So the gun's probably pretty darn good 
all the way around just as it is. I'm guessing. Right. And and I can personally attest to if you dial the power back, you are going to be happier with the accuracy, especially if you're keeping it within, you know, reasonable ranges. Uh, I know a lot of BB gun competitions are only at five yards. Um, so, you know, if you're keeping it within that five to 10 yards and you dial that spring down, um, it makes a much smoother, much more accurate gun and keep that barrel clean and dry as oil free and dirt free as possible. And that will really maximize your accuracy. I would be interested to hear in the comments below guys, like I'm asking this genuinely not to be a dickhead, but like, why would you need more than two, two inch groups at 45 feet and one inch groups at 30 feet for a BB gun? I mean, I genuinely don't know the application, so I'd love to hear to where you would need to improve upon what the 400E already provides. That's where I'm at on it. I'll leave it We're I'll never leave it satisfied there. as shooters. <laughs> We've men. always got to push We're that manly men. <laughs> uh, All right, Brian Miner writes. Oh, boy, it's a big one. Um, I know it's new tech and everything, but I've owned the gun for several weeks now, and I'm really underwhelmed on the power. We touched on it. Don't think we need to go down it again for light plinking or possibly doing like you show shooting cans from 30 feet. It may be fine, but that, uh, but that is really it. And going longer ranges are basically out. Yes. The 400 feet per second is just slightly faster than a Daisy Red Rider BB gun for comparison. It's 350 feet per second. I really wish they improved the tech to the point it can handle longer ranges and have more power. So if I understood everything you guys have been saying for the last, I don't know where my timer is, but we've been doing this for quite a while. Um, with increased velocity and speed comes decreased accuracy at distance. You're kind of in that sweet spot in that three in that Daisy Red Rider, 350 to 400 feet per second. That's the sweet spot for a BB through a steel bore barrel at 30 to 45 feet. I don't want to answer for you guys. He say, he's, he's mentioning, Brian's mentioning a standard would be 25 yards. I don't disagree with him. It would be cool to have a BB gun shoot two-inch groups or one-inch groups at 25 yards. Um, but I don't know if the physics will allow that unless you go to that rifle barrel. And that just changes so much stuff. To where it, it, may not it really possible. does. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he hit it, it hit the nail on the head. You know, there is one application for which this shines, and if you try to do anything else, you are going to be disappointed. If you want to go squirrel hunting with this, uh, <laughs> you're going to be disappointed, and you're going to have a lot of pissed off squirrels. So. Yeah, and it's not very kind, because we were, if I was remembering, we're talking like, was it three foot pounds of energy or something like two foot, foot pounds? Yeah, it's, it's definitely not something I would recommend for hunting anything more than grasshoppers. Yeah, now, exactly. I'll admit that I, I've done some work to mine. I know the, the limits and capabilities. I did toast a chipmunk uh, on full auto, <laughs> and he didn't know what hit him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, uh, you know, it, right. if you're looking for long-range uh, shooting, BB guns are not the way to go. Uh, if you are looking for that backyard plinker, uh, and you're looking for a full auto experience, uh, and you keep it within that frame of mind, um, you'll be happy with the 400E. But. It's a, it comes down to you use the tool for what it's best at. And and for what he's describing as a best at, my mind goes to the pellet gun, whether oh, it's a cheap pellet gun or whether it's an expensive pellet gun. And I'm definitely looking at, you know, my eyes have been opened as far as electric power is concerned. Um, and really, I'm setting my sights on something more than just necessarily BBs. I'll, I'll leave it at that. But good, good. Uh, he goes on to say, Brian goes on to uh, write, um, since this is uh, since is, this is right in the range of a starter PCP rifle, it has some much tougher competition in the market, like the Sig uh, Sig Virtus with a 700 foot per second, delivering 16 foot pounds and is capable of pest control and small game game hunting. I think he probably just spoke to that geo and is currently sixty dollars cheaper. But again, I'm guessing. That's a pellet rifle, not a BB gun. Different intended purpose. Um, I mean, if I were wanting to do what Brian's doing, I might be getting myself a Crossman 2100 Pumpmaster 1377 Classic for 
for a hundred or bucks, you know, and go squirrel hunting. I don't even know oh, if you definitely. need to get it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome for that, honestly, inside of 25. I agree um, that the run factor and the quality are amazing. So he gave you kudos there, uh, but not so much the power range performance. And we're going to see that as a theme throughout these questions, but I think you guys have done an awesome job of touching on it. I mean, it, it does great what it's designed to do, but if you take it away from the application of what it's really for, um, you know, you're better off looking at something else. Uh oh. Yeah. Looks like we, we lost, lost Jake. <laughs> we lost you, Jacob. All right, we're back. We had a technical difficulty and lost Jacob somehow there, but um, seems like we got the ring here back. So just closing out Brian's question, uh, just the recap of all that is that there that, that there's an intended purpose of the Bar 400E, and it works amazing for that, but it, as soon as you try to turn it into something else, like a hunting pellet rifle, um, you're better off just buying a hunting pellet rifle. It's better for what you're hunting. It's a better tool for you, and it's less expensive. Would you guys agree with that? Take away. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. the old classic apples and oranges. So, yeah, summarizes yeah. it succinctly. Yeah, I'm a guy. I got a garage full of tools, and I when I need a crescent wrench screwdriver, I grab a crescent wrench. When I need a flathead, I grab a flathead. I'm not going to try to make a crescent wrench a flathead. <clears throat> But I respect his question. It was a good one. Good question, Brian. All right, moving on. Saucy Kumba writes, anyone know the purpose of the bolt release latch on the left side? Is it supposed to be loose? The rattling annoys me. And unlike my Crossman DPMS, no movement, uh, there's a very slight side slop on the sliding stock. <clears throat> yeah, so this this isn't, you know, doesn't have last round uh, holdover like, you know, you would with, the, the, I think he said he had the DPMS uh, yeah. or, you know, your standard AR type firearm. Uh, so, yeah, it is. It, this, there are several functions on the gun. It was put there to to uh, replicate the actual firearm for training purposes. Um, so, yeah, it does not function. Uh, as far as the slop on the, uh, the um, stock... Oh, Mm -hmm. Or is, was it the? Sorry. Well, he, he says, anyone know the purpose, of the purpose of the bolt release latch on the left side? Is it supposed to be loose? The rattling annoys me. Does anyone else have these issues too? I didn't have that issue. Yeah, so maybe he should thing. have him contact us if it's if it's really it should be you know mildly. It's not going to be like uh, static. This. Yes, correct. It's not going to be static, but. Uh, if it's excessively loose, uh, you know, reach out to us, send a video or something like that. We can, we can take care of it. Just wondering. Maybe it's that it moves, but there was no way I was going to hear hear it over that. Yeah, it will. It will move slightly. It it's not a fixed piece, but it's it shouldn't be you know rattling around too too wildly. So mine does. So I was thinking it's normal. You know, so there may not be a fix. Yeah, for it. I mean, it, it is going to move. It is simply decorative. It it performs no function on the gun other than for looks and maybe just for that that touch and feel uh, for training purposes. But it it doesn't actually uh, do anything. Uh, so we'll definitely take you know the feedback that you know it's maybe a little looser than our customers would like and and try to improve on that. Good deal. All right, Richard uh, Rosenau. How is the perspective coming to modify the airsoft high capacity bottom tooth spring tooth spring wheel being necked down as well as a resized internal sorter from airsoft to BB? I have no idea what he's talking about, Geo. That's all you know. <laughs> well, what he's talking thank, about says, is in you. airsoft, you have what is called a high cap magazine. And basically with a high cap, you just feed bb's into you know airsoft into the magazine and there's a little toothed wheel at the bottom and you just wind that wheel and that's what you know winds a spring in your magazine and feeds them into your gun mm. uh, and i'm with them there that's the magazine style i prefer because i'm a shooter first and whatever keeps me shooting more and you know screwing around with reloading and stuff less is always going to be a benefit to me mm. 
unfortunately the factory really wasn't able to develop that you know in the time frame we were needing and you know we're working with them on some you know maybe different magazine capacity options uh, that has definitely been discussed because that is my my first choice as well um, unfortunately I, you know it didn't happen this time around but you know there is definitely magazine development ideas and, and that is definitely something I would I would like to see then you don't need a speed loader mm. you just dump them from you know your BB container into the magazine wind the wheel and, and in an ideal world it just simply works hmm. but you're just limited by the production capability of your partner basically right and in addition to that you also have to consider well if we're dumping a thousand bbs into the magazine you know it does get pretty heavy uh and so oh, yeah that's right these things are heavy they are heavy and mm -hmm. and so you know on the surface it seems like it would be such an easy thing to do unfortunately in practice uh life wasn't as kind to us as i would have liked it to have been because i certainly oh, prefer that style myself but we yeah, like it we'll swap in magazines but when you got one magazine that you can just leave in the gun and wind a wheel and, and shoot all day i mean yeah man that's the dream tommy gun it he goes on to say, um, this seems to be a simple process that would grace, greatly increase the ammo capacity as well as ease of loading. You spoke to both of those. Bora has a, a knockout top of the line product that is sure to be the future. So he did just solid there. And he says, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this thing. Okay, RW writes, good review. Seriously, I have run 5,000 BBs through my 400E. No disappointment. One jam, had to both pull the barrel to clear it. Fantastic shooter. I can't wait for someone to take the gearbox apart and put in a stronger spring and stronger motor. 450 to 500 feet per second would be awesome. We've covered that to death. Um, all good. <laughs> the reloader is kind of crappy <laughs> until you spray some silicone lube into the ammo bottle. It really works better once you have sprayed some lube into the ammo bottle. It's pretty, it is pretty accurate. One to two inch groups at 30 to 40 feet. Bravo to Barra for bringing this to the USA. Made in Taiwan. I'm okay with that. I think we've all probably got stuff to talk about with that one that we want to say, but um, guys. Yeah, Gio, why don't you uh, key off on this one? I think uh, there's kind of a, as we've talked about earlier, there is a little bit of a learning curve uh, to getting just kind of the cycle down for how the speed loader works. Uh, and once you get the hang of it, uh, you know, yeah, it's, you're still loading BBs, just like anytime you load a magazine, it's not the funnest part. You want to get to shooting, but you're going to get into a good, uh, a good rhythm where it's not, you know, I can't get my thing loaded. Yeah, for sure. So one thing that I found also is the type of ammunition that you're using uh, really plays a big part into how smooth the speed loader is or isn't. Um, I understand, you know, adding lubrication can make a substandard BB uh, flow through the speed loader a lot better. The only caution I'd really offer there is when you add lubrication, uh, it always attracts uh, dirt, dust. Uh, and so that's going to be detrimental to your accuracy. Uh, your magazine itself can pick up dirt and debris as with the speed loader. And so in the short term, it seems like a good solution. Uh, but long term speaking, I would I wouldn't use uh, lubricant in the ammunition itself. Uh, just go with maybe a more round and better surface finish on your uh, your ammunition. So like the the black plated uh, ammunition I found has been you know exceptional, um, and some of some of the brands of the zinc plated uh, BBs also seem to be uh, far superior. Uh, we would recommend that you stay away from you know the copper plated ones. In our experience, there's too many oversized uh, BBs, and when you get an oversized BB, you get a jam, you get a severe enough jam, you can break off teeth in the gearbox. So. Can I, if I could speak to that a little bit, Gio, um, my mind went to where RW is at when I first started my learning curve with, with the 400E. And to his point, 
I got really frustrated with this speed loader out of the gate until I learned how to make it work, how to how to how to use it, and also how, and and once I figured out what ammo to use with it, total game changer. So um, the first thing is when when I was loading the magazine, I was doing like the shake and plunge, and um, guys save your jokes, especially with lube, right? But um, <clears throat> But that helped <laughs> tremendously. And what, what, what you're helping is the BBs, you know, they sit up in here and then there's like this 45 degree shoot and then this little vertical where, where it's pushed into the top of the magazine. Um, I think he's referring to lube in here, maybe making that BB round that bend easier. But I found the two really good ways to make it like seamless rounding the bend is the shake and plunge. And also to Geo's point, making sure I had the BB right. So I tested all these kinds kinds of BBs as you guys saw in the video, and by far, for whatever reason, this Black Crossman Black Widow um, made this loader and using it seamless. Like I'm not defending these guys. I get what they're saying. I also get what um, RW is saying, and it was also good with um, these Umarex and Air Venturi Steels, but I had a lot of BBs that it was just a nightmare with. And maybe you can speak to uh, speak to that a little bit as far as maybe why and what your findings were. I know you touched on it, but. Yeah, yeah, it really does come down to consistency and diameter uh, as well as just that surface finish. Uh, if you look at some of these BBs under even just a magnifying Keep talking, glass, I'm going to close my window. <laughs> we won't even talk about, you know, a microscope. But if you look at these under a magnifying glass, you'll find a lot of these BBs are less than round and less than smooth. And so if you wouldn't want to repack a bearing using the BBs as a bearing, uh, you probably shouldn't use them in, in your uh, 400E. You'll be the closer it looks to a ball bearing, the happier you're going to be. So that would be my recommendation. Uh, go for quality ammunition. It's like anything in shooting. Um, you know, the better the ammo. You know, you can put terrible ammo in an amazing gun, and you're going to have a less than optimal experience. And mm -hmm. you know, this is no exception. It's just a lot of us don't think about you know BBs as being anything precision or or anything of that nature so the more precision you think in terms of the bbs the happier you'll be and the better the experience of using the speed loader will be and, you, and of course just, there is a learning curve so you know if you're using this gun for the first time uh mm -hmm. you know it is going to take some practice it's like loading any magazine um you know they, they all have their little quirks that you have to overcome to to really speed things up so yeah for whatever it's worth my tips are don't overload the hopper like I would keep, I would put maybe like a hundred BBs in here. That seemed to help a lot. <clears throat> and that shake and plunge motion seemed to help a lot. And, and using the black coated BBs. When I say helped a lot, let me clarify, made it seamless. Where some of the other, where some of the other ones were just, you know, I, I just wanted to, you know, kill myself. <laughs> but but to his point, like this feeling kind of junky, I feel like this feels good, not defending y'all, but the only piece that I thought was a little bit flimsy was the flex like in here. But there wasn't really a lot of pressure on here. And I didn't break it in all of my time with it. And I I whipped this thing's ass daily for mm -hmm. a lot of weeks. And so yeah. I don't know. What do you what do you guys have to say to that? Yeah, you, you want to see how many BBs are in the loader, right? So it needs to be a clear material or at least somewhat transparent uh, because not being able to see how many BBs in there is not ideal. Um, we have made some improvements. Uh, so everything out there right now, there are some slight ergonomic changes in the internals of the speed loader that do improve the loading. Um, and we are going to be making, uh, we're testing several variations on different speed loaders right now. Uh, and so we will be coming out with more improvements uh, in 2023. But yeah, it, the, the current model, uh, get the hang of it. Uh, we are going to be putting out some more content on that on YouTube and 
on the website just to kind of give you the more basics you know so if you're having some trouble you can watch those videos and see uh see the technique in action so to speak i mean you've already kind of shown it here steve but shake and i plunge. think we'll kind of we'll we'll show that a little more um you know actually showing the bb's going into the magazine and things like that so people can see hey this is this is how it works so and of so, course reach out to us if you feel like hey mine's something's weird with mine or, or something like that i mean it's it is possible uh and and we're happy to talk to you and and um you know, help you out. Good deal. So the takeaway, if I'm reading you guys right, is um, once you figure out how to use the speed loader, it's great. It's fine. But down the road, you've got plans to make that learning curve a little bit easier on the end user through maybe a design change. Is that yes, pretty much right. what it yes. boils down to? Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. And like awesome. we said before, you're still loading BBs, so that's not the fun part. We're going to try and make that easier and faster for you. But let's remember the fun part is shooting. <laughs> and so. on that, you know, I could load it once I figured it out and had the right BB in there, I could load a magazine. Honestly, guys, like 10 seconds max. Yeah, it's it's quick. I mean, yeah. it's faster than loading a lot of other magazines I've loaded. I'll tell you that right now. So, <laughs> yeah. So for what it's worth, like. I don't want to be like too much like I'm on your guys' side, but I do want to defend you a little bit in that in that I found it very okay. And and I get annoyed with stuff that ain't okay, and I'm not afraid to say it. So <laughs> I found it okay, very okay. All right, moving on. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Do it. Okay, RW writes PS to all. The barrel has two O-rings. One O-ring sits in a groove on the barrel that guides the barrel into the front of the receiver. You would think that someone would mention this groove O-ring in a video. My bad, I honestly didn't know, don't know what he's speaking to here, but okay, the other O-ring, hmm, not super sure, but I think it keeps the aluminum sleeve in the body of the gun to steady the barrel. You can clear, clearly see this in the sleeve at 917 of this video. He's referring to the full review, which I linked up earlier, uh, back from September. I actually put some RTV on the outside of this sleeve to hold the barrel steady in the body. I then used that second O-ring to keep the tip of the barrel steady at the very end of the barrel when you screw the moderator back on. Any suggestions as to my logic would be appreciated. P.S. This thing rocks. All right, guys. <laughs> What's that yeah. all about? <laughs> so he is correct. There are two O-rings on the barrel. Um, there is one that sits in a groove. And the purpose of that O-ring is to center the inner barrel within the outer barrel. And so that's what that one does. Okay. And then there is another one that's toward the muzzle end. And like he suspected, the purpose of that is to indeed uh, keep the aluminum bushing in place uh, while shooting. So um, since this is basically a spring piston style platform, mm -hmm. there's a lot of mechanical vibration. And so that uh, the purpose of that is to indeed keep it in place. Uh, I do like what he did using some RTV um, instead and then pushing that O-ring further out uh, to maybe center that within the mock suppressor. Mm -hmm. um so yeah anything that you can do to make the uh barrel as rigid as possible while still maintaining a slight degree of flex uh mm -hmm. that's needed within that airsoft style barrel system is is always good so all those things can be done to improve accuracy let me just ask this so i'm just you know i'm a consumer i spent a couple weeks on the gun learning it and filming with it and my takeaway is that it worked great I had my 30-foot 30, 30 accuracy, I had my 45-foot accuracy, nothing broke on the gun. So, I'm, and I'm genuinely asking because I don't understand, what is the importance of what he's asking to me at the end of the day? The right, user? so with, with accuracy, I mean, we always want to try to push the envelope, um, and I'm just as guilty as the next guy of tinkering around with my air guns and seeing what i can squeeze out of them so i i totally get where he's coming from mm. um you know as we've touched on before accuracy is kind of a relative term and as you stretch out the distance uh obviously those groups open up if you look at um bb shooting competitions 
generally they're in the five yard to 10 yard range and little improvements uh, that you make to your barrel setup can make huge improvements at those closer ranges okay uh, i've built bb guns that can shoot you know sub quarter inch well that's quarter inch <clears throat> not center to center uh quarter inch groups at five yards and so subtract out the 177 from that and you've got a pretty darn good group for a, a smooth bore bb gun okay and so i definitely get where he's coming from uh the main thing i would caution there is make sure that you do allow some degree of of movement um you know in any accuracy modifications that you make it could it needs that back in the hop up area uh just for better feeding and reliability so okay so this goes into the bucket of theoretical accuracy improvement right on what i saw the one inch at 30 feet the two inches at 45 feet in full auto mode for sure and <laughs> you're really going to see an improvement you know at closer ranges where bb's can shine in their best light possible so okay okay interesting thank you for that <laughs> all right anything to add jacob or shall we go onward no i i think uh press on all right Uh, Rick says, I found that you can put a battery in the top of the gun, but, but, oh, I'm going to try that again. I found that you can put a battery <laughs> in the top of the gun, but, and still fit one in vertical. Oh, I see what he's saying. Like where the buffer tube, your adjustable stock goes. I'm looking at getting a splitter so I can have two batteries in the, uh, in at the same time, but I'm wanting to know, can I increase the voltage a little? He'd be doubling it if I think I know where he's going by taking two 7.4 volts volt and putting them in series that would double it to 14.8. Um, can the motor handle it just a few days ago and real. Oh, just got it a few days ago and, and really enjoying it. I thought he said he tried it. My bad <laughs> guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the motor will handle it. The motor won't handle it as long as it's going to handle 11.1 .1 volts. Um, and of course, I mean, you're also looking at voiding your warranty. You will increase the rate of fire. You're looking at minimal gains at best in velocity. Um, it, it would, it'll put a smile on your face in, until it doesn't. So until it puts smoke <laughs> in your nostrils, right? When it releases <laughs> the magic smoke, the party's over. So nothing like the smelling of smell of burning rubber when you're shooting your bar. <laughs> Oh man, or or just like the carbon brush smell. I, I I'm guilty of overvolting motors, and it is it's it's fun until the sparks fly and and the brushes disintegrate. And exactly, your stock burn, your poly stock bursts into flames. It's right. all good <laughs> <laughs> uh, on your cheek. Um. Wheels FVP writes, can the mags clip or, oh, this is a good one. Can the mags clip or slide together to hold them together on the gun? Just like you see in ARs and AKs. Wish I had two here to show you. Yeah, so this is a standard size uh, magazine. Uh, so you will be able to use a, a clip uh, if, you, if you want to. Yeah, and if you're into if you're into that space as well you can kind of blend the two hobbies and and you know get something out of the deal so wait so if i'm understanding if i understood you right jacob this is a standard standard ar sized mag so you can buy an ar clip and you can stack the magazines is that what you're saying that i understand you right yes cool well that makes that easy <laughs> guys we're getting there um archangel 11 writes now, if only Barra would sell replacement speed loaders slash reloaders. They finally sell spare magazines, but not the reloaders. If you hear of Barra finally selling spare magazine reloaders, please let us know. All right. We're letting you know. They're question. available. They are available. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, feel free to go to Uh They're available, so you, you can pick them up whenever you want. Good deal. In his defense, it has been two months. Yeah. Yeah, two months since they I should, shot the video. They should have been up. I mean, 
uh, we may not, he may not have heard, or, or I, I think we, I think we had him up when he first launched that video, but mm. I could be wrong. This year is kind of blurred together. <laughs> I understand. This man was at Shields uh, earlier in the week, which is just huge. I think that's just huge, man. My hat's off to you. Yeah, oh, hopefully, hopefully hope we, you you'll see one. us there. Yeah, I can't make any promises, but yeah, we'll see what happens. That would be huge. You're playing with big boys. Uh, Dusty Nickel writes, they're using old airsoft technology. To the air gun developers, let's get these things shooting pellets, guys. Seven exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> they want these, right. They want the bar 400 to shoot pellets. Yeah, I think the message is loud and clear. We want more power, faster. So we are and more we are working ammo than more BBs. accurate. Yeah. So there are limitations, uh, you know, different use case, but uh, we are working on some other projects. Uh, I'll say I can't can't really say a whole lot more than that right now, but we are working on some other projects uh, to be released at a future date. So definitely, we hear you, uh, and we're. We're going to make it happen. So, Good deal. I personally feel like this has been one of the most interesting sub-themes of this video. And I will go on record saying that this is perfect as it is. To speed it up or to slow it down would mean a change in accuracy. It would mean a change in, in the painfulness level when the ricochets come back. I mean, it really is kind of perfect for what it is. Um, but I also hear these guys and that they, they like you guys. They like what you're doing. They like your product. They're excited. You got them revved up, you know, and they want to see you do something with pellets. So for what it's worth, I would encourage you to leave the 400E alone uh, unless you thought you could get away with tweaking it and, um, you know, keeping the accuracy there and, and just maybe take that theme and apply it to something with, you know, pellets if, if that's what you wanted to do for these guys. Yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't agree and more. Something separate. Uh, you know, the 400E was really positioned to be in, you know, kind of that CO2 full auto space. Um, and I think we would be doing it a disservice. Um, I, th I really do feel like the pellets and the power belongs um, to something in the future. So it's, it's in the works. Good deal. And hopefully you would leave the 400E pretty much as it is because... Right. I mean, the I 400E will always be the 400E. Um, okay. There may be, you know, some improvements if, if we were to get, you know, enough demand on, you know, let's say, you know, a full supply of aftermarket parts, longer outer barrels, inner barrels, MOSFETs, things like that. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. definitely entertain, um, you know, those ideas. So if you want something, you know, do like you've done in the comment section, make your voice heard. Um, you know, the squeaky wheel gets that oil. So uh, squeak away, let us let us hear what you want. And, and that'll give us a better idea of how to direct our efforts. So we're all strong, ears. Strong, Geo. Message received. All right, this guy, uh, oh, his name is Steve. I thought he was talking to me. Steve <laughs> writes, uh, he is talking to us, I guess. This has been a joy to own. Out of all the BB guns I've had and still do, this is the only one worth a red dot. I used a cheap one, 25 bucks. It's so accurate at respectable ranges for BBs that it almost gets boring, LOL. It's kind of where I'm at on the thing. <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, don't use copper BBs. You guys spoke to that. They won't feed. Daisy works fine. Um, one thing I disagree with you on is the charging handle. He's talking to me. Because my observation was that the charging handle does nothing. It's purely for cosmetics. And I think he's correcting me that he found different. It actually does load the first BB, but you don't have to use it. On the first cycle, it will pick up a BB. Try to control your laughter when using it. It's addictive. I'm right with them on that. Um, guys, the charging handle, what's the deal? So the charging handle is actually decorative. Um, that said, when you pull it back and release it, what that does do is add a shock or vibration to the gun. Um, it, it sounds like your magazine might need a little break in if it's taking that or a first shot dry fire uh, to get your gun shooting. 
Uh, so I would definitely recommend um, maybe leaving your magazine loaded overnight just to kind of set that spring. Um, and then if you continue to have issues where you have to use the charging handle to get that first round to come out, uh, to to reach out to us. So because that's not normal behavior, it, it should pick up on that first round or on the very first shot should fire a BB. So yeah, I was noticing I didn't have to just having this thing push the BB up into I don't know what you call it I think you call it a hot copper I thought that was magnetic I think I was remembering BBs like sticking up in the up in yeah this. there there is you a, can almost a see it yeah you can see it right there with the light magnet. on it right so yeah there is a, a a magnet that is up in there and do keep in mind because of that magnet and because this is built off airsoft technology when you remove your magazine it is possible to still have ammunition in your barrel so you know golden rule of handling guns is keep the muzzle in a safe direction and this is no exception always assume that your gun is loaded um so i feel like that's a, that's an important thing to point out yeah uh, some, it was, of, the, ahead, some of the uh, bbs will come out um but some of them definitely can stay in because of that magnet and that just helps position the bbs uh, in place for the nozzle to pick them up and push them into the bucking. So, I noticed that in in the video review, and I spoke to that how if I would run the magazine completely out until it was dry firing, there'd be nothing left in that little hopper up there. Right. But if I dropped the mag when it still had some in it, there'd be like two or three or four BBs magnetically held in that little hopper, even though this had dropped. Right. I could fire fire out of the gun. Yeah, that is correct. So always be aware of that. And I mean, you know, it, it should be second nature to anybody who's handled firearms. Uh, you know, we just it, it's religious to us. You know, you keep your finger off the trigger. You keep your muzzle in a safe direction. You always, always treat it like it's loaded. But I also realize, you know, there could be some, you know, people that bought these, you know, to train their youngsters and stuff. So make sure that you, you drill that point home, you know, and we can lead a, the next generation of gun owners in, in the right direction. So spoken, spoken flawlessly, Geo. Um, Rod J says, why only 50 rounds per mag? Why not include the battery and charger with the unit? Two good questions. Yeah, so, I mean, we kind of hammered on the mag a little bit. There are a lot of additional challenges. Uh so it's not as as easy as just increasing the capacity uh wish it was but we are working on that as far as the battery and charger uh you know so these these batteries uh if you're shipping them and they're not shipped properly they can be a fire hazard and so there's a lot of additional restrictions from uh you know shipping companies for shipping these batteries and so in you know when we were working on planning out the launch of this item um packing the battery in the box increased a lot of logistic complexity uh for getting the batteries to our manufacturing facility and then um, getting them here and so it was a lot more straightforward to be able to ship them separately um and it, it decreased the costs as well as, you know, reduce the working with which shipping companies would actually move them. So that was kind of the original reasoning behind why they had to be done separately. Now, online, you have the ability uh, from a lot of different retail channels to buy these as a kit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that options on our website as well, where you can, hey, you can pick up the battery and charger uh, with the rifle or you can just purchase the rifle the other reasoning behind it was uh we knew that people some people already had the batteries we wanted to give them an option i mean basically there is no co2 gun that ships with co2 and there's very few uh pcps that come with a pump right so most most air guns do not come with the power source mm -hmm. unless it's like you know a brake barrel or multi-pump something like that but it's pretty common um you know to have to buy the power source and these batteries are widely available um online and so uh we felt we felt like it was going to be okay people would have plenty of options to choose from whether they wanted to buy it from us 
or someone else. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. And like what I was hearing in your message there, it's not that you were trying to reduce the end cost by 15 or $20 to the end user. It's just that it was a logistical nightmare because of all of the red tape that's associated with shipping a LiPo battery. <clears throat> For sure. Yeah, it, it ended up being, you know, a lot more work uh, and potential risk. I mean, we have we've ship we bring in a lot of goods and when you in, introduce some of those uh, complexities, it makes it a lot harder to get space on a vessel. So it's just it's not just the work of actually, you know, working out all the details, but a lot of these steamship lines, they won't even ship it. They'll just say, we don't we won't give you a booking. So E rocks like you're not going to get it. So for us, it was a lot easier to simplify it and mm -hmm. make sure we could get the goods and we weren't going to have you know issues um, on the supply chain side. That makes really good sense. Well, guys, that's uh, or Geo. Do you have anything to add to that before we we wrap things up here? No, I think that pretty well sums it up. I I guess the unfortunate thing is, you know, people are used to buying CO two and and you know pumps and compressors, and then as a society we're programmed, you know, the whole battery's not included is it already has that negative connotation. So we definitely sure. get that, but there were reasons, you know. Uh, behind why why unfortunately you know we weren't able to to do it as we would have liked as well so mm -hmm. and even do you want to do that because i feel like as a consumer you know this is a, my battery rant every time that you get a scope and it comes with a battery or you get a remote control for your tv that comes with batteries they're the worst possible batteries on the planet and they're they either arrived dead or they're dead within a week or a month <laughs> <laughs> right. So there's that too. Yeah, and the airsoft guys will will certainly get that. If you bought an airsoft gun with with the battery it, it came with, those batteries are junk. Um, but I do understand, you know, maybe people that are not used to lipo batteries, you know, they would like to have, you know, a battery that they know is going to work. And mm -hmm. we do definitely offer those. And if you do have any battery questions, make sure that you reach out to us, um, and we'll help you along with that. So. Or just watch my initial vi video. We did a did a huge piece on there on battery right. and charging that really explains all the technology and uh, uh, hopefully any question question anyone could possibly have there, other For than sure. doubling your your cells <laughs> and your voltage <laughs> and turning turning your Bara 400E into a glorified matchstick. <laughs> so um, with that, guys, um, anything you want to say to the the customer base and and say or your your customers and saying goodbye? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to talk first. You know, uh, I appreciate all of you that are a bar customer. I know not even just for the 400, but some of our other products. Uh, you know, for us, we're a new air gun company. Uh, there aren't a ton of new air gun entrants in the marketplace. I mean, there's a few, uh, but for us, you know, we we're here to to stay. We have lots of different things that we're working on, um, and we want to contribute and really introduce a lot of new ideas and things that are going to be valuable to to the shooter. And um, so we appreciate you uh, being interested. And, and like Gio alluded to earlier, if you have any ideas or things that you want to see, uh, please let us know, you know, comment on this video or you can reach out to us. Um, you know, we are, we're open. We're not, you know, we're not, going to ignore those types of things who want to uh, entertain anything. So uh, for us, thank you for watching this video um, and learning about the gun. We think you're really going to love it. Um, and you know, we've described the use case. This is a fantastic uh, backyard plinking gun, a great training tool. Um, and the whole idea behind it, you're going to buy it once and that's it. So, uh, you know, obviously you'll have to purchase BBs and you're going to need a lot of BBs, <laughs> uh, but those are cheap and it's cheap to charge. Uh, it's going to last you a long time. So, uh, we think this is a great option for anyone who wants to do a lot of shooting, wants to do a lot of training, get in trigger time, um, those types of things. So, uh, it's been fun being on here. 
I've never done uh, something like this. So, uh, Steve, thanks for arranging this, and uh, thank you for everyone writing your questions and and your ideas. And uh, we appreciate you guys thinking about it. And let us know if there's anything else. It's awesome, man. Pleasure is mine. This is great, YouTube. Geo. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more with what Jake said. You know, we definitely do appreciate all, you know, the support and everything. And I would like to just say, you know, as a product developer, um, I, I want to hear criticism. Uh, you know, I want to hear constructive feedback. So, you know, don't hold back. Um, you know, anything that, that we can grow from, even if it's maybe painful to hear, um, I want to hear it because that's just going to make a better product uh, moving on down the road. So keep the feedback coming. Uh, we always like the compliments and, and that's great. But at the end of the day, we don't grow from pats on the back. You know, we grow from challenging ourselves. So yeah, keep it, keep it coming. It's uh, It's been very clear to me spending these few hours with you that you guys are both um, totally, total professionals, and I, uh, I for one, have appreciated your um, your sincerity and your vulnerability with my audience, with your livelihood, this product. I think that uh, I think that speaks volumes about uh, you two together, working together, and in the future of your company in general. So, um, it's not a surprise to me that I've seen your brand already at Pyramid Air and Air Guns of Arizona and Utah Air Guns and wherever the heck else you're talking to, you know, it's, um, you're doing good things and people are taking notice and, and, uh, we are grateful. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thank you guys. Um, appreciate you doing this and, uh, have a very Merry Christmas. And, uh, with that guys, this would make one hell of a Christmas gift <laughs> for anyone in your family. And I'll try to get this video up with about a week before uh, Christmas time so that you'll have time to do that. So, Happy holidays and and uh, and all that goodness to you. All right, thanks, Steve. Merry Christmas, thanks. everyone. Merry thanks, Christmas, guys. You as well. Great job.